Hello, I'm Pastor Tommy McMurtry. This is our final video that we're going to do about preaching, and I appreciate you all watching these. I hope they have been a help and a blessing, and a lot of what we've done is just tried to uh, give a lot of tips on some things to do and, and things not to do, and try to help you in your interpretation of the scripture to make sure you're rightly dividing and preaching the word as it is supposed to be preached. And so when it comes to preaching, you can have the perfect outline, you can have your doctrine all right, but at the end of the day, you've got to get up and you've got to deliver that message. So for this final video uh, on teaching on preaching, we want to talk about presentation and delivery. And there are some people out there who are great theologians, maybe even very godly individuals, but they're terrible speakers and it's hard to learn from them. You know, you have others who are fantastic speakers, they're charismatic in individuals, they have the amazing ability to get up and for 45 minutes uh, sound great, but yet at the same time they don't really say anything and you don't really learn anything. You know you enjoyed what you heard, but you don't really know what you heard either. And so I think this is another area where everyone wants to be balanced, but it can often be very difficult. And so what I want to do today is just share some things based off my experience as someone who's been preaching for a long time and, of course, somebody who has been listening to preaching my entire life. So the main piece of advice that I always give younger preachers or guys starting out is this statement, and that is be yourself but don't be yourself. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, first off, I understand that statement doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I say that because it's something that's easy to remember, and then I use it to kind of illustrate two very important points. And one thing is too many preachers, they try to just get up and just imitate another preacher. And there's a difference between following somebody's example and leadership and just imitating them. Obviously, if you're trained under somebody, if uh, they've been a mentor to you, you're going to pick up a lot of stuff from them and you're going to have a lot of maybe even the same mannerisms and things. But there's a bit a difference between actually following somebody's lead and somebody just imitating. And I'm afraid many people are imitating. They're not being themselves. They're being fake, trying to be somebody else with a different personality who has different experiences and different backgrounds. And you need to understand God made you the way that you are, and he, God made you who you are, and you need to be you and not someone else. God only made one Pastor Tommy McMurtry the second. There's only one, and I'm supposed to be me, and you are not supposed to be me. Hopefully you can learn some things from me, but only I can be me. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, that, uh, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words into thy mouth. So God had made Jeremiah. God had a plan from the beginning, from the time he was in the belly. God had a specific plan for Jeremiah. And you need to understand that God has a plan for you. And God has a plan for me. God has a people that he wants me to reach. And God has somebody that he wants you to reach. And the things that you've been through, the way God made you, he made you for a very specific reason, and you need to fulfill that. And so you just imitating somebody else, it's going to get you out of the will of God, and you know, it's just not going to work. It's, it's not going to work. You are not that other person. You need to go, and you need to be yourself. You need to, uh, and, and so how do you be yourself? Well, for one, use your real voice. It, some people, uh, it's like they turn on this preacher voice when they're talking. If that's not how you talk, don't talk that way. I've known some people who you know, were from the South and they had a Southern accent when they preached and maybe they were kind of from a camp meeting crowd, but then when they ended up going more liberal and going to this more modern, uh, new evangelical type, they literally lost their Southern accent. And it's like, wait a minute, if you have a Southern accent, use a Southern accent. If 
you don't, though, don't talk with a Southern accent. But it's like some people feel like, well, if I'm going to fit in with this crowd, you know, I got to talk this way. If that's not how you talk, don't talk that way. I think that's ridiculous. You know, so if, if you're not an emotional person, don't be emotional. There's some preachers, they cry probably every time they get up and preach. You know, if that's who they are, you know, God bless them, you know. But if that's not you, don't think you have to get up and cry every time you preach. Just be real. Don't be fake. People are going to see through you. And you need to understand, not everyone is going to like your preaching. But you know what? Some will. You are not meant to be the pastor to all of Christianity. God did not create you for that. God has not created any one person for that. And you've got to understand that there are going to be some good people out there that just don't really care for your style and the way you preach. But there's going to be some people that you will be able to reach that no one else will be able to. And God made you for that. So be the person that God made you to be. Be yourself and use those gifts that God has and don't try to be somebody that you're not. And I have no problem with a preacher that's maybe a little wild and crazy if that's just who he is. But if that's not you, don't act like it. So be yourself. So now what do I mean by, but also don't be yourself. What do I mean by that? Well, many times people are disobedient to what God has told them to do and they use their personality as an excuse. Okay. Being bold may not be according to your personality, but you know what? We've been told to be bold. Be bold anyway. There's some times where you know, we're told to be loud and we're told to be passionate, where we're supposed to shout some things from the housetops. And you say, well, that's not my personality. But you know what? It's in the job description. You've got to do it. You've got to sometimes make yourself do things that make you a little uncomfortable. We see in Acts chapter 21, verse 40, it says, and when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, and it goes on to tell us what he preached. But notice how it says he beckoned them with the hand. You know what he's doing? He's trying to get their attention. He's trying to draw the people in because they needed to hear what he had to say. It wasn't enough for him to just stand up and say it. He had to do something to get their attention. And so we see him beckoning with the hand. And sometimes you might find yourself in a situation where you've got to do a little more than just get up and read off what you have to say or just speak something. You might need to get a little animated. You might need to get a little excited. You might need to raise your voice. The situation might call for that. And you might not be comfortable with that. But I promise you there's going to be times where you are needed to step out of your comfort zone and you can't say, well, that's just not me. You've got to do it. And uh, there, uh, another verse in Acts 20, 31, it says, Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Paul preached with tears. He was serious. Now, I don't believe he was being fake. I don't think he just turned on the tears to try to play at their heartstrings. I believe this was sincere. I believe it was real. But he's obviously doing more here than just speaking the truth. He is showing how important it is. He is putting his heart into it. And, you know, I'm sure he was not comfortable uh, when he was preaching in a way that had him crying. I don't think anybody likes doing that, but it was what needed to be done. And Paul got it done. So there's going to be times where there are times where we're told to be strong in our leadership. And we have to do things and we have to preach about things that are not pleasant, that don't make people comfortable, that aren't popular. But when it comes time to do it, you've got to just get up and you've got to do it with confidence. Whether that's you or not, you might be scared out of your mind, but do it anyway and do it with boldness if you know it's right. Uh, we've been commanded to put on Christ. We've been commanded to walk in the Spirit. And there's going to be times where you don't feel like doing those things. Make yourself do it. Just do it anyway and don't use your personality as an excuse to be disobedient. As an individual, I'm a friendly person. I don't like making people mad. I don't like confronting people. But as a pastor, I regularly have to do those very things. And I don't get to use my personality as an excuse to be disobedient. So that's what I mean when I say, don't be yourself. I'm saying don't use your personality as an excuse to be disobedient. By all means, 
be you, be who God made you to be. Use your gifts and uh, whatever it is you have going for you, you know, that uh, God created you with, you know, use those things, but always be willing to step out of your comfort zone. And so what will help you, I believe in your delivery more than anything is uh, having a genuine love for the people you're preaching to. This isn't just about a style, because again, different styles reach different people. But one thing that I think can reach anyone is having that genuine love for those people. We see in 1 Corinthians 13, 1, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or as a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So, you know, who cares if you're the most fantastic, most eloquent speaker? Who cares if you know all mysteries? You've got it down. Your doctrine is correct. But you know what? If you don't have charity, you're just a guy making noise. And we need to be more than just somebody that's up there making noise. We've got a message that God has given us that we need to deliver. We want God to use that message. We want God to uh, convict people. We want to change hearts and minds of people. And we need God's help in these things. And if you are up there and you're loving people, you have that genuine love, I believe you'll get through better than somebody with great eloquence and great knowledge who doesn't care about the people. At the end of the day, no matter how good you say something, it's not going to matter if the people aren't listening. And I think one of the things that will help people listen to you is when they know this guy cares about me. He, you know, he loves the Lord. He's speaking the truth from his heart. That's going to get their attention. And you might stumble and stammer through your service and through your preaching. But if you have your heart right, if you've got the Holy Spirit, I believe he's going to help you get through, and ultimately that's what it's about. You know, you've got some preachers that are natural born salesmen. You know, they know how to tell the crowd what they want to hear or even how to, even how to tell them unpleasant truths, but spin them in a way where, you know, people won't notice it. And so, you know, don't be a hireling. It, people are more likely to pay attention to somebody, that, someone that they know loves them. They will hear the tough rebukes. They will accept some of those hard things to understand or to accept if they know it's coming from somebody who really cares. And entertaining them, that'll keep them happy for a little while, but actually teaching them something, you know, and feeding them, that's what's going to keep them coming back long term. You know, cartwheels on the platform, that'll get some attention for a little while, but eventually you're going to have to up your game and do a backflip. And you know what? God hasn't called you to be an acrobat. He's called you to be a preacher of the word. And I believe if you're doing that and you're doing it right, people are going to keep coming back. So take advantage uh, of the ability to watch yourself preach, you know, with all the video streaming tools that we have available, you know, and watch how you preach. Um, look for things you can do to improve your presentation. Try to uh, avoid bad habits, you know, and all preachers have them. We have our little phrases that we say over and over again, little stutters and things that we do. Um, you know, try not to get too sensitive about it, but at the same time, you know, try to be aware of those things and see if you can fix them. We don't want them to become distractions. And that can happen where we do these things so much, they become distractions and that, this is a big challenge, but it's something I think we should all work on. You know, uh, another thing we, you need to do, be approachable. Okay? Allow other people to talk to you about your message and ask questions later so you can learn where maybe you're failing to get the point across. You know, we can get up and we can have the perfect outline, but again, maybe we're not delivering it well. Maybe we're not getting the point across to everybody but if nobody's ever allowed to talk to us and ask any questions or even disagree, then we're not going to know, you know, what we need to address more and what we need to focus on more. So be approachable, you know, allow people, I'm not saying you got to let them interrupt you in the service, but you know, after the service, allow people to talk to you and find out, you know, what 
what worked, what got across, what didn't get across. You can't just assume that everyone understood everything that you put out there. And allowing people the ability to approach you and talk to you, it will help you so you can know, you know what, I obviously didn't do a good job presenting this. All right, next time I'm gonna make sure I do a little better here. I'm gonna focus a little more attention in this area because a lot of times it is, it's, it's our fault. We're poorly communicating even if we have the right position. So the last thing when in, in your presentation, I think you should preach with the same passion and conviction in front of 10 people, just like you would a thousand people. I think that's very important. Um, in your delivery, you, know, you need to take every opportunity serious. It might only be a few people, but you know what? These are 10 people that God has put in front of you today. This is your chance to minister to them. And you know what? If you're not faithful in little things, God's not gonna give you the opportunity to do the big things. You should preach the same way in front of 10 people just like you would a 1,000 people. You should put as much effort into your study when you know you're gonna be preaching to a very small crowd just like you would if you're gonna be preaching to a large crowd. I think that is so important and um, I, I believe that God will bless you if you do that. And so the very last thing, uh, this is the very last point, but this in reality probably should have been the very first point, but I made it the last just for emphasis, and that is be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. While we should all be preaching with the same Holy Spirit, we, must, we need to understand that doesn't mean we're all going to preach with the same style, with the same accent, and things like that. But look, make sure you try to connect with God when you preach. Not just your favorite preacher. Do not channel that preacher that you enjoy. Okay? Try to get a hold of God. Try to allow the Holy Spirit to take over and to help you. And if the Holy Spirit gets involved, you can get up there and stutter and mess things up. But if the Holy Spirit is also speaking to the people, there, you're going to get the message across where without the Holy Spirit, you could give a flawless delivery and presentation and it's not going to accomplish a thing. The Holy Spirit, it is so important that we are dependent on Him and make sure we take Him to the pulpit with us. Every time we go, take the Holy Spirit with you and let Him use you and let Him speak through you. He's the greatest preacher in all of the world. And without him, uh, you're, you're not going to accomplish much. And so every time you get up in the pulpit, you know, I hope you spend some time studying, making sure you've got a good outline, practice your delivery, try to learn, uh, you know, from watching yourself, you know, learn from your mistakes, but more important than anything else, take the Holy Spirit every time you go. And I believe if you'll do that, a lot of these other things will just fall into place. You're naturally gonna end up doing the right thing if you have the help of the Holy Spirit. And so I hope this was a help to you. Thank you so much for watching these things. I hope you'll take them and just go and use them and preach the word, preach the word faithfully. God bless you. Thank you.